In this video, we're gonna compare the $25 Rothko Messenger Bag with the $250 Filson Original Briefcase. These are both typical shoulder bags made out of cloth fabric. And in the What's a Difference series that I've produced on my channel, I compare two vastly different segments of the market just to show you the kind of differences you get in materials, construction, and utility when you are looking at different price segments. What determines objective differences in value such as materials or quality of construction might not constitute a value difference to you who are looking for things with a separate set of criteria. So I don't like to declare an undisputed champion in these videos. I like to leave the difference up to you as someone who's probably considering should you just spend a minimal amount of money on a product or a lot of money on a product. Here is the Rothko Messenger bag on the right and the Filson Original Briefcase on the left. Now, for someone who is looking into these bags, you might ask, well, these are two different styles of bags. Why aren't you comparing ones that are the same style? This is a briefcase, this is a messenger bag. Well, and you're right, they are different styles of bag, but I think in general, you'll use a shoulder bag in a fairly comparable way. There are some differences in compartments that you can make note of, but the overall differences in construction and materials would be true even if I had a Rothko briefcase, which I do not believe that they make. I believe that the messenger bag is the closest thing at about the $30 price range that you could find with the Filson. Now this bag was purchased new from Amazon. This one was purchased new from the Filson outlet. It is not a second though, it is just an out of season item. So they both represent what I would say are good examples of their respective bags. And I would also say probably if you're spending 20 bucks in a bag, you're not going to care as much that it's not specifically a, a briefcase. Whereas when you are going to be spending big bucks, like about $250 on a Filson briefcase, you are going to be concerned about the specific functionality you're going to get. So I think it's fair comparing these bags, even though they do differ slightly in style. Up to bat first is this Rothko Messenger bag, and you can notice that they definitely use nice wide pieces of cloth. This is a fairly thick canvas here. It is backed with a softer uh, cotton lining. They just close the flap with Velcro, and uh, honestly, the Velcro is pretty minimal. Rothko is a brand that has uh, a history back to 1953, and it is a 100% cotton bag that is made in India. This bag does feature a small compartment here made out of the same kind of uh, medium weight cotton fabric that is lining the inside of the messenger bag flap. And then on the inside, you have a very simple unorganized compartment. And of course, this is partially a function of being a messenger bag, but generally the more affordable bags are not going to have as much time spent into the details of construction. Do you have two big pockets here as well as pockets on the sides? And those side pockets do have snaps so you could put a water bottle or something in there very well. Also, you can point out that the uh, messenger bag style stitching here is uh, very basic, but very robust. You have full stitching here as well as the rivet holding in the strap. So I've never had any concerns about this tearing. Overall on the shoulder, this does feel uh, nice and sturdy. I don't feel like this is going to tear or anything like that. It does have uh, basically no internal structure, which is actually fairly true of the Filson as well compared to say a leather briefcase. This is a bag that if you are looking for something affordable and functional, but not very organized, it's gonna be a good choice. You could probably find more functional, more, um, more organized bags on the market for this price, but this is a great example of very basic construction, very basic stitching, no ornamentation, no use of fancy materials, uh, just something robustly built for a fairly um, utilitarian purpose. Do I think that the bag is particularly attractive? No, but is it ugly? No, I think it's fairly you know, neutral, fairly, um, fairly modest in appearance, and I think that it would work great in an environment where you're not trying to have anything fancy. It's definitely a bag that doesn't draw any attention to itself. 
By contrast, the Filson definitely utilizes a, a greater variety of materials and has a lot more attention to detail. But first of all, obviously you're noticing the use of very thick leather. This is what Filson calls their bridal leather. It's basically just a uh, full grain leather that is extremely thick and heavy. You can see about how thick this leather is here. Uh, not only is this, you know, keeping this flap secured a little bit better than the Velcro on the Rothko, but you've also got these straps here, which of course, because this is a briefcase and not a messenger bag, uh, give the bag another way for it to be carried. This leather is definitely stiff and hard. It isn't a comfortable leather to touch. It is more of a tough leather. Now, both the Rothko and the Filson do have interesting histories. The Filson does have a little bit older history. This particular Filson here has two different kinds of cotton, primarily used in the construction. On the outer pockets, you have what's called Filson's tin cloth leather. This is made by Barber in England, and it's basically a thinner, water-resistant cloth. On the top flap here, you can see that it is the same tin cloth, and then on the inside, there is a cotton lining. And I would say that the cotton feels a little bit uh, less soft to the touch, maybe a little bit more fray resistant, um, but not a whole lot thicker than on the Rothko. You obviously have the use of these big, gorgeous brass zippers here. And these brass zippers are definitely one of the things that, that I would say are probably one of the more expensive things on the materials of the bag. They just feel like they're very high quality, would never break. Uh, on the inside of the bag, it's kind of nice to have some little touches like the use of a different two-tone cotton, green cotton, on the outside compartments. You do have two dividers. Uh, in the middle, you have uh, a number of smaller compartments for holding business cards, headphones, pens, pencils, etc. I have some USB sticks over here. And then you just have two basic compartments on either side. On the back, you do have another extra compartment just for sliding things in, kind of last minute, like I might take a book that I'm reading along with me and put it in here, or a magazine. Um, and then of course, you also have a different style of strap here with the riveted leather and brass materials. This is a very handsome material, uh, very heavy duty. You can remove the strap, which is nice for some formal environments where you're not gonna necessarily want that, that uh, strap on there. It's partially a function of a briefcase versus a messenger bag, but it is just another little attention to detail that you'd have this full grain, thick bridal leather strap compared to a frankly very simple cloth strap. Now, as far as comfort goes, the Rothko is actually probably more comfortable on the shoulder given an equal amount of, of weight, but I do think that as this pad breaks in over time, I've been using this Filson briefcase for about three months, it will be very comfortable and very nice to have on my shoulder. Now, inevitably, when you're talking about spending a lot of money on a bag, you are going to be talking about branding, and a Filson product is guaranteed for life. It is made in Seattle. In this case, it's made with some partial imported materials because of the tin cloth which I described but the regular cotton I to my understanding is made for Filson in the United States whereas this Rothko which you know of itself it does have a, a bit of brand heritage it's from 1953 um, this bag is just made in India now everyone has different opinions about globalization and and whether buying local is is really adding value to your product to me i am glad to be supporting more local economies i think that what also happens is, is you have a little bit more artisan craftsmanship in the filson so for example the stitching is extremely clean throughout all the leather is cut impeccably and all of the materials including even little things like the snaps are just fantastic. So that's definitely one thing that you're paying for here is an appreciation of little details, slightly more complexity in the construction, and a fineness of construction that you're not going to get at the more affordable level. Now it's a fairly controverted question to decide which one is going to be more durable. And I say that because I haven't owned either of these for a very long time. I've owned this one for a couple years and I've owned this one for a few months. And this one has held up to regular bike rides, frequent walks to work, and the elements uh, normally that one would experience in clear weather. It obviously is not waterproof in any way and so it hasn't really ever gotten wet. 
The Filson I did buy because I knew that I might be getting into situations where I'd want uh, still cloth fabric, uh, still that lighter weight compared to a leather briefcase, but I wanted some extra water resistance and this fabric in particular is really, takes well to being treated with um, various materials that will help it stay waterproof. I also just appreciate the construction, the leather details, the use of these thick full grain bridal leathers and the nice zippers. All those little details were things that I just knew enjoying this on a daily basis would be something that would add value to my life and I think when you can surround yourself with beauty and, and nice things there's nothing wrong with that. That being said I'm definitely not getting rid of this bag any soon it still serves a very useful purpose to me. I often will carry heavy books and notes in this and uh, it's definitely something that I'm glad to have and I think it represents a great value. Of course if this messenger bag is too cheap and college freshman for you but the Filson is too pricey and extravagant there are plenty of things in the middle range here that I am not covering bags from LL Bean, Eddie Bauer and the like personally I think that uh, unless you really uh, are willing to look a lot into where bags are constructed and what materials are used, you're not really getting highly detailed design and construction until you're getting into about the $200 price range. Otherwise, the quality of construction really won't rise significantly above this Rothko. Well, there is a very quick and basic comparison of a $25 shoulder bag. This Rothko Messenger bag could easily be used as a briefcase in a pinch and the $250 Filson original briefcase. Two very handsome bags in their own right. One is very rugged and basic. The other is a little bit more refined, but still definitely retains a uh, very robust style and execution. It is sort of a matter of taste, which one you would prefer, but it is also a matter of appreciating details in construction and wanting to buy something from an American market that would probably drive the price up on the Filson quite a bit. Honestly, they're both good bags though, and it's just a matter of deciding what's going to work best for you. All right, if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you watching. Let me know what you're using as a briefcase in the comments below. And if you're new to the channel, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Thanks again.